In this documentary, we venture into the semi-demolished ruins of one of the greatest industrial wastelands we have ever seen. So, we're going to check out the third piece of abandoned industrial heritage in Wales. We've checked out two slate mines from the sort of Victorian era, early 20th century, and now we're going to sort of pick up the next step and check, up, check out an abandoned coke plant from the coal industry. This is an absolutely enormous site that's partially demolished. Um, we're going to see if we can get in there because it looks absolutely awesome. Now let's go and find out what's in store. Colliery began as a coal mine in the early 1900s. In 1958, the coke works opened. In 1986, the colliery shut following privatisation. In 2002, the remaining coke plant closed. In 2020, its demolition is underway. Assessing the site from a wooden cooling tower, we pushed through the overgrown outskirts of winding ivy and pipework to the edge of the main coke plant. Treading cautiously closer amongst the active demolition site, we were first greeted by a large brick block. This was the boiler house. Four chimneys emerged from its roof, and behind it stood the work's huge central chimney and one of the site's many concrete processing buildings. As nervous as we were, we couldn't wait to venture nearer. As we were about to venture inside, I noticed a large boiler wrapped in raw asbestos fibre through the smashed upstairs windows. We had to be careful to avoid both structural hazards and security in the site, and staying observant was our best defence. This side room was likely for the boiler's controls.
As we began to explore the forsaken roadways, we were greeted by an impressive concrete structures which would become familiar. This one stood on stilts, likely to allow collection from underneath. Having had its adjoining structures demolished, it was now disconnected from the ground below. The timeless utilitarian buildings were used to process the coke at various stages of its production. Coke was produced by heating mined coal to create a less smoky fuel which burned at higher temperatures, favourable in some industries such as for melting metal. It looks like some sort of like Stalingrad, like oh, fat know. grain factory or something, doesn't it? Andy? Yeah. If anything, this gave me more uh, stock of vibes. Well, on. Have a look in the on the inside, you know. Um... As we got closer to the enormous silo tower, we started to feel a sense of desolation. In their prime, these satanic mills must have been a rigorous and hostile place to work, much like the ruins which survive. Much of the soil was blackened with coal, and the concrete stained with soot. We wore respirators when entering the structures, finding it easier to keep them on as we crept around the site. As well as the demolition of the asbestos filled buildings, the very ground itself was contaminated with years of use. Acid mine drainage is common at former coal sites creating highly acidic water containing toxic metals, which becomes a problem if it seeps into the groundwater. Doesn't look very natural in colour to me. And look, it's running off into the drain. Lovely. And you wonder why these places are getting knocked down. Still, amongst the toxic wasteland, wildlife flourishes. In 2019, a new species of millipede, nicknamed the Beast of Bethel, was discovered here. Decontamination of huge industrial sites like this is one of the biggest financial barriers to redevelopment. Yet, Squibb have been tasked with the site's demolition, beginning with the coke ovens and the conveyor belts which link the now isolated concrete buildings. Here is the wreckage of the collapsed conveyor. One day, the site will become residences and schools, but its industrial footprint on the town will prevail. This building would have loaded coal from the cylindrical silos behind onto the conveyor hopper where it would have been passed up to the giant tower for processing. We were able to enter this hollow structure and were amazed at what remained inside.
Look at this guys, amazing. Pure industry. Look, there's all this sort of dust on here from the, the coke I suppose. And you definitely don't want to do lines of this stuff. <laughs> but um, look at it, it's just, the proportion is just mega. I reckon this could be, you know, 100 years old. Perhaps more, perhaps a little less. Somewhere in that ballpark. This genuinely looks like a war zone, this place. That's the best way to describe it. If you've ever seen Full Metal Jacket, which was actually filmed at Betts and Gasworks in London, now demolished, this is kind of as close as um, I think I'll ever get to seeing that site because it generally does look like Vietnam or something. Let's go up another level. Hope this is secure. Because if not, that's my legs gone. There's this huge machine. We're going to carry on up these sketchy old stairs. I oh, don't like this. Made it to the top though. At least the floors are concrete. I've got no risk of um, falling through this. This has to be one of the wildest places I've been. <laughs> Genuinely, this reminds me of some of these places you see in Europe and stuff, some of this old industry that's left for miles. Yes, I've had to go to another country for it, but it's better wells than going out to um, Slovakia again or something like that. There's big metal panels there. I don't want to tread on them. It looks like the concrete floor gets covered in all this coal material. But you could go through that, so we're not going to tread on there. Look at that. Amazing stuff. In the short time we had, we were only able to see a fraction of what was left at the incredible coke works. But we still had one last objective. This is the site of the coke oven battery where the coal would have turned into coke under extreme heat. The chimney and offices below escaped demolition. We had to check out the huge tower above, nicknamed the Bunker, which would have tipped the coal into a giant railway wagon to feed the ovens. Part of the wrecked conveyor still hangs from its side.
Here we are underneath the coal hoppers in the tower, where the locomotive, almost as big as this hall, would have picked up the coal. We headed up into the tower itself to see how high we could get. No, that's fair, yeah. We managed to see the many coal hoppers, still with coal heaped around them. However, greeted with more asbestos and only a rusty ladder, this was as high as we decided to make it. So we've just been inside this huge abandoned coke plant. It was absolutely amazing. It was one of the biggest and most spectacular explorers I've been to. The place was contaminated as hell, um, but it was, it was worth it. It was interesting. Got some excellent photographs and video, and it sums up a little bit of history, which is now going into decline um, as the history of Wales has gone from the slate mining through to, um, as we've got here, the coke and the coal industry. And um, obviously now that's all getting demolished, as you could see, and no doubt something like houses will probably be built over it. And that's the way the industry built in the sort of 20th century has been changing all over the UK. Mm -hmm.